praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And I am your host for today on the broadcast, Do the Right Thing. Amen. Where you can be seen on Channel 20 Comcast every fourth Sunday at 8 o'clock to 8.30. Amen. And I also want to thank Bell Global Network, who makes it possible for you to see us on Comcast 20. I used to come on and say welcome to all our Detroit Metro viewers, amen, but we go further than that, amen. We go to the metro area in Detroit, and we also can be viewed on On Demand, BGN TV, Gospel.com, where we can be seen by everywhere, not only here in the local area in Detroit, but wherever people have access to internet and cable, they can view us, amen. And so as I always come before you and I always start off saying, this is the day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And so I just wanna share with you today some things Things that God has been dealing with me about and I pondered it in my heart and I just want to share it with you today but before I share what God has put in my heart to share with some of you and I pray and hope that it will help you today that you can reevaluate how we look at things and how we perceive things so father God Lord I thank you oh God I thank you once again that this is the day that you have made oh God and I thank you oh God as you anoint my lips of clay as I go before your people to share the word that you have shared with me, oh God. I thank you, oh God, that you will anoint their ears, that they will hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, oh God. I thank you, God, that you will anoint their eyes and that the scales will fall off, oh God, so they can see and hear and perceive your word. And so, God, I thank you, oh God. I come against all distractions. I come against hindrances in the name of Jesus. And I pray, oh God, as this word goes forth, oh God, that it will fall on good ground and that the enemy we shut him down and he will not be able to come and steal the word out of God of God out of your people's hearts. Amen. Um I'm going to start off and like I said I'm going to share with you what God gave me. Amen. And um uh, I'm always thinking and I'm always ponder pondering why is it God that we are not prospering oh God what are we doing wrong in the body of Christ? So now let me back up and say, what is prophetess para doing wrong? Amen. And so uh, as I laid down and God began to share some things with me, I had just got through watching a broadcast, amen, the International Faith Conference. And so as I began to lay down, God had begun to deal with me. And he said that, let me make sure I want to get it right. He said that the enemy is trying to make a mockery of your faith. Let me say it again. He said that the enemy is trying to make a mockery of your faith. And as I laid there and I began to tune my ears in to hear what the Spirit of the Lord was saying to me. And he said, we, and I'm not the only one, so if the shoe fits, wear it, okay? But he says that we preach about faith. Amen. I know I do. I love talking about faith. And I know when I first started out in faith, like many of you, when we first got saved, amen, how we were on fire, we were like little children. And everything that we believe God for, God brought it into manifestation. I know he did it for me. And so as I began to lay there and as God began to deal with me, he says, you remember back when, when you got up and you began to teach and preach about faith, we know that faith produces the evidence. Amen. And so we know that hope and we go from hope to faith. And when we get to faith, it's tangible. We see it. We can touch it. Amen. We can handle it. And so as God began to deal with me, uh, let me start off reading this scripture right here. Amen. If you will go to me with, to, with me to John 19 verse 30. And the word reads as follows. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. And so as I begin to read that, when God said it is finished, there's nothing to add to it, nor is there anything to take away. And when it, uh, it's finished means that it is paid in full. Everything 
that we need. When Jesus died on the cross, amen, he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the Old Testament, which was a shadow of the things to come. And so we find when we get in the New Testament, everything that we read about, about the sins and reconciling us back to Christ, amen. When Jesus died on the cross, my brothers and my sisters, it meant it was finished. It wasn't anything that we had to do except is to believe him as our personal savior and believe and take him as his, at his word. Amen. And so we know that God sent his word and he sent it in flesh. Amen. Jesus Christ was the word manifested in the flesh. And so as I began to lay there and when God kept saying it is finished, and I thought about going back what he was saying about when we have faith, amen, and when we believe God, we'll produce the evidence, amen. And so uh, I know I used to say that talk is cheap, and we all talk a good game. We talk about faith, but are we really seeing the manifestations in our lives, amen. And so I know that the word of God says that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, amen. And then when he did send his word, they rejected it. So I find you know, I, I'm finding out that a lot of times from, and I always say it from our, in our past where we have pastors, preachers, teachers, amen. And like I said, I'm not condemning them. I'm not coming against them. But they did the best they could when they began to reveal the word to us, amen. And I, I don't know about you, but I came up in the era where everything was, uh, we had to get into works. Uh, concerning healing, concerning our finances, concerning ministry, amen. We always thought that we had to make it happen. But as God began to deal with me, and a lot of reason uh, uh, that sometimes we think we're in faith, but we're not in faith, and it's because we have not rightly divided the word of God. And so that's why I encourage you when I come on, you get in the word of God. Just don't take my word. Get in the word of God and get it for yourself. And, and then when I read that the word of God is so simple that a fool cannot err. And I found out that we're trying to make things of God very complicated. And so let me go back when God gave me that, when I used to teach about or preach about the evidences in the pudding. Amen. And I used to tell God, Lord, if I'm going to go before your people, let me be an example. Let me uh, have, or let me put it like this. Let me have the evidence. Amen. And so I remember at this particular time, God sent me and I was at a particular church and I won't say the name. And it was some things that God had promised me. Amen. And I was saying, God, before I get up before your people, let me have access to it. Amen. And so I begin to teach and I begin to preach people, encourage them in their faith of, uh, concerning housing. Amen. And so at that time, when I got up and I preached that message, God had gave me what I had been preaching about about faith about houses and land and particular things that God was going to give me and so I, I, I found amen let me go back I don't want to get ahead of myself when I said when we first got saved how many of you just believe God for anything but by the time you got saved and you listened to some people that have been saved uh, some years longer than you have amen and their uh, opinions and ideals how faith is supposed to work and when you started out running for God you were on fire you believe God at the drop of a hat and you saw the manifestation of it. Well, let me put it like this. That's how it was with me. But by the time I had got through listening to people who thought I was, they were more seasoned than I was and because of some things that they didn't get in their lives or whatever the situation was, I began to base my faith on man's opinion. All of a sudden, I found myself leaving what the Word said. Amen? When we read over in Hebrews in 11 and 1, and the Word of God says, Now faith. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And when I first got saved, I believed it just like God said it. Amen. Once I went in the word and I saw that he did it. Amen. In the New Testament concerning healing, concerning finances, concerning everything that is pertaining to life. 
I believed it. But by the time I got through him, this one's opinion, my faith was watered. I would say it started out like crystal salt. Amen. But by the time it was laced with this one's opinion, uh, it was like black pepper was pouring in there and, and vinegar and every other thing, amen, that was not conducive to faith. It got in my spirit. And so I found myself backing up. Amen. So going back to what God told me, he said that the enemy is trying to uh, make a mockery out of your faith. And I said, God, what, what exactly do you mean about that? And so that's when he took me to John 19 and 30 and everything that we need pertaining to life, he paid it in full. It's finished. And so I think some of us, when we first got saved, we didn't consider it as concerning healing, our health, our wealth, our prosperity, ministry, whatever, whatever we need pertaining to life, it came with our salvation. It is a package. And I found out some people only thought that meant I'm saved and I'm not going to hell. Amen. That my name is written down in the Lamb's book of life. But I found out that it means more than that. And so as God began to deal with me, he says that we're still asking him for stuff that he has already given us. And so this is, is going to change my strategies or even how I pray, even how I approach God. And so he told me, he said, if it's finished, daughter, if I've given you everything you need, why are my people coming to me, asking me, God, heal me. God, provide for me. God, Bless me spiritually. When the word of God says over, I think it's in 2 Peter, amen. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But over in 2 Peter uh, 1 through 3, it says that he has given us everything that pertains to life. Everything means everything. So why are we constantly going to God, asking him to heal us? When he has already said back in the Old Testament and over in the New, over in Peter, that by his stripes we're healed. Okay? Why are we still going to him, asking him, God bless me spiritually, when he said he has given us all things that pertain unto life? And so to me, it's like defeating the purpose. When you have faith and God has said, I don't have anything else to give you. Because when God sent Jesus, he sent his best. And it took care of everything that we need, my friend. And so every time we keep going back, and you know, that's kind of frustrating. Amen. If you didn't gave somebody something and, and, and you, let's say you didn't gave somebody a thousand dollar check. And you've already given it to them. And every day they're coming, uh, uh, Prophetess Perry, can I get that thousand dollar check? And I'm saying, I've already given it to you. All you need to do is go and cash it. Next week, amen, because they haven't cashed in on what I've already provided for them, they constantly keep coming back. Uh, Prophetess Pira, can I get that $1,000 check? And so you get frustrated. I have already given you the check, sweetie. You just got to cash it. And I find that some of us in a body of Christ, that's what we're doing. Amen. We stand up and we say that we believe God. Amen. But it is already finished. So why are we keep going back begging and pleading to God for something that we already have, my friend? He cannot do anything else. When he was on the cross and said it was finished, it is finished. It is finished. There's nothing else that he has given us. We can read in the word. He has given us the keys to the kingdom. Why are we going back and keep asking God for something that he has already done? And so we're going to him in vain. He wants us to get the revelation. It's already done. It's nothing else you can receive from me. I've given you authority. He has given us dominion and authority in the earth. Amen. And so we've been placed here, amen, to bring from the uh, thy kingdom come will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is nothing else that God can do for us. And so I, I just want to tell you that you need to change your mindset. Amen. I know this is hard for some of us because down through the years we've been told we got to go in and we got to take back from the enemy. Well, you take back from the enemy. God has already taken it back. 
Amen. He has already redeemed us. And so in this day and hour, all we are supposed to do is fight the good fight of faith. Amen. That is our warfare. And then we hear people, and, and it's, it's based on stuff that we have taught. We are in wars that we don't even have to fight in, my friend. He has given us angels. We have warned angels. Our assignment is to release the word of God, and then the angels go out, and they do warfare. Amen. He has given us angels of finances. Glory be to God. We are to release God's word, and they will hearken to God's word. So now, we're getting in the place of the angels. They can't even do what they're supposed to do, because we're trying to do what they're supposed to do. When he said, just speak the word. And so, like I said, we're going back. We're asking him for things that we already have. So actually, you will, then you will say, well, prophet, this, what about when I'm sick? Okay. Then you get in the word and you go and says, he has already healed us. He says, I've already healed you with my word. I sent my word over in Jeremiah. Glory be to God. He's restoring us unto health. And so I find some of us and I was doing it myself. God will tell me you already healed. But I will find myself when I have an ache or pain in my body. I will be right in prayer, right back in prayer. God heal me. He said, you already healed. Now your job is to let the devil know in your body. No, no, no devil. I'm already healed. And his purpose is to come and steal from you what you already have. God has already given you that. God has already healed you. He's already given us the finances. He's already said that we heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So we have access to it. But if you don't know, we're still running around in a vicious circle. God bless me. God bless me. He has already blessed you. He has already given you everything. Everything that you need. And in fact, everything that we need is already down on the inside of us. Glory be to God. That is the spirit of God. And so I just want you to know next time when you go to God, well, God, I need some money. Well, then release your angel and say, angel, I need some money because God didn't already provide it. So there's no need of me going back to God. Now you can do warfare and you can decree the uh, word of God. The devil, you're going to take your hands off my stuff, but it is not up to God to tell the enemy to take the hands, his hands off your stuff. Amen. It's not up to God for you to stand up and decree and declare to the enemy that you're already healed. Because he's already told you, you got to up on the enemy, I am healed. So my thing is to remind you, devil, that I'm already healed. I'm not going back and asking God to give me something that I've already got. I'm not going back to ask God to give me money when he said everything he's given us, the money we need. So we've been walking around here deceiving ourselves. And we get into works again. We're going and we're going to war with the devil. Amen. No, you war with the word. The word is already, he's already been defeated. He's already been defeated. He's already been defeated in our bodies. Well, you said, well, prophet, what if the pain still stays there? Okay, well, then you got to keep speaking to your body. Because your body, though, you confuse your body. When God says you heal and you stand up one day and you decree and declare, I am healed. And then the next few days you back in prayer, God heal my body. Your body is confused. I heard you say out of your mouth that I'm healed. But then I also hear you a couple of days later going back, God heal my body. So we're even confusing our body. Because we're sending mixed signals to our body through our ear gate. God already said in Philippians 4.19 that my God shall supply all of our needs. All means all. And so we have to change our language. But if you don't know what you have, yeah, you're going to keep going back to God. God, I need some money. Well, now open up your mouth and get in there and read what I've already done. Open up the wheel. Come on. The New Testament. Open up the wheel and see what I've already provided for you. I've already provided it for you. I was telling Dr. Collins, a friend of mine, when I was talking to her, and it's like me going back, God, give me a nose. And he said, Perry, you've already got a nose. It's right there on your face. You've already got a nose. So why are you coming back asking me for something that you already have? It's air, church. We have been operating in the spirit of air. 
And so I'm hoping from now on, from this broadcast on, that you will begin to open up your mouth and tell the devil. Because God already knows. Amen. He already knows. It's the enemy that knows enough to know that you don't know what's already you, yours. We're the only one. He knows it. That's why he's coming to steal what you already have. And like I said, when he says that I have given you everything that pertains to life, that means everything. I know it might sound elementary, but if it's that elementary and you got it all together, then you would have more evidence in your life. We will not be walking around here sick. We will not be around here poor and begging amen and saying, woe is me and going back to God every week. God, give me this. I need this. God, I need that. And so he keeps us in a vicious circle. Amen. If you keep going around the mountain and getting the same results, that means you need to change something. That means you need to speak to the mountain, not go around the mountain. You need to declare and declare to the mountain, hey, you got to go. You got to be cast into the sea. I have authority. I have dominion. Amen. What I say out of my mouth, I can do. Even with giving, with everything, we need to remind the devil, okay, I've give. God says give, and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He will cause man to give into your bosom. We don't need to go back to God. We need to tell the devil, you're going to take your hands off of my stuff. Amen. Because you are a squatter, and you are illegal, and you are holding my stuff illegally. Amen. But I have the right. I have God backing me up. God is endorsing me. He has given me the word. And I don't have to go back to God and keep asking him for what he has already given me. Now, my thing to do and my authority to do is speak to you and tell you to loose whatever you have of mine. Give up that land because God says it's mine. My daddy owns it. If it's a husband, God has said Amen. You speak to the devil. You're going to lose my husband. Because God has already said in his word, it's not good that man should be by himself. So that lets you know you're supposed to have a husband. And then I find people going back, Lord, if it's your will. If it's your will that I be healed. If it's your will that I move. If it's your will. The only place, and you can correct me, that I read in the word, and that's when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, thy will be done. And that was, uh, it was dealing with salvation and him dying on the cross. Okay? If there's any way, God, let this bitter cup pass over. It wasn't, God, if it's your will that I be healed. So that's a slap in the face of God. If he died on the cross, that means he's double-minded. We don't serve a double-minded God. And so, people, we have to stop being double-minded. Stop going to God, asking him for stuff that he has already given us. But we need to remind the devil that he needs to back up and give up our stuff and tell him, give it up and turn it loose because it's mine. That's, I say it again, with your healing, with ministry, amen, with your money, with your finances, with your children, amen. I read, I'm just going to paraphrase in the word when you get saved and it brings household salvation, amen. So we have to go back again and remind the devil, you got to take your hands off my children, amen. And over back in the Old Testament, I think it says that my children were born for signs and wonders, amen. And so we have what we need, but we're not needing what God has already provided. And so I just want to leave with you today. Amen. Change your mindset. Stop going to God for things that he has already given us. Don't go back and ask God, Lord, to heal me. He has already healed you. Don't go back and say, God, open up doors for my finances because he's already given you the finances. Amen. Don't tell God about spiritual things because he's already given you everything that pertains to godliness. Amen. And to the natural man. Then he's already told us, uh, Beloved, I wish above all things that you be in good health and that you prosper. He has covered everything. When he died on that cross and said it is finished, he meant what he said. Church, he's not coming back to die again. He didn't die once. He's not coming back to die again for you because you don't know your word. Amen. He has already given it to us in his word. 
So I just want to challenge you today. Get in your word. Stop asking for God. Amen. For things that you got. Stand on the word. Open your mouth. Let the devil know he's got to give up your stuff. And like I said, it might sound elementary, but there's too many Christians running around here in lack. And we're living beneath our privileges. Amen. And so until the next fourth Sunday of the month, this is your host, Prophetess Paranite, telling you, do the right thing. God bless you. Amen. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's going on, y'all? It's Mr. Bell. Some know me as Anton Quarboy Bell. Others know me as Elder Anton Bell. I am co-CEO of Bell Global Network, VGN TV 2090. And I want to invite you right now to get your own broadcast. Calling all ministers, all politicians, all business owners. Get your own broadcast right now. Starting at $99. And if you have an idea for a TV show, we can bring your idea to reality. We have a package that's available that includes production and facilities. Also, we have advertising packages starting at little $25. So don't hesitate. Give us a call at 313-355-7877. Once again, that's 313-355-7877 to make an appointment today. You never ever let me down and when I'm sinking and sin, you never ever let me drown. You're my life, got my security. You took my insecurities to put me in the lion's den and took out all the fear of me and gave me a limit to undeniable faith. In your arms, I'm safe and for that I give you praise. Harper Woods in Detroit. We can help you improve your memory. We specialize in how to improve your memory workshops, including individual, family, group, and mental health services. Also, services include lifestyle changes, in-home care, utilities, disability, adult daycare, nursing homes, substance abuse community resources, therapeutic training sessions, Spiritual counseling. We have different payment plans to fit your needs. Call today and make an appointment and allow us to serve you. Once again, Alice Consultation Services LLC. For more information, call 313 615 6323. Once again, that's 313 615 6323. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network. My 
My, my soul says thank you. My, my, my soul says thank you.